Welcome. Any presents? A bauble or two for my half century? Mean bastards. I've often suffered for my thin streak of optimism. For God's sake, we've heard of life imitating art, but must it imitate dreams? Well, whichever is going on, none of you is coming in my jolly old pentangle. That's in the rules, isn't it? I mean, well... Have I sought individuality in mere quaintness? Am I a trifle confused, mixed up? Shall I wake sweating and thankful for the morning light? Alone but safe. You lost your tongues, have you? But well, that would be unnatural. Look, I'm getting frightened. Sphincter's loosening. Dad? <coughs> James? Anne? Angela? Taxi? I'd, I'd like to go to... Where? L Lower Burley. That'll be 16 miles. I know. Next to me or in the back? Of the car? Oh, yes, well, uh, front, I think. <laughs> 
Berlin. You mean where it is? If you had look at what it didn't, if you didn't either. I mean, do you know it? You know the village itself? I know you can drive through it in around about a minute and a half. Yes. It's quite small. My father lives there. On Pond Street. So you'll be wanting Pond Street? Alas. Eh? Nothing. When it's a single fare, I prefer a person that sits in the front, you know? Yeah. I can understand that. Some gets a kick out of sitting in the back feeling I am mighty. Do they still? In these parts. Some do. And some from London. Like you are yourself, no doubt. Well, from Paddington Station. Not from London by way of residing there? No. I couldn't stand London. I need a vision. I must have a vision of some kind. It's bleak when you're more than halfway through life. No vision. Yeah. You need a vision, all right. Like, what's her name? Bernadette. Like St. Bernadette. I've had her little visitations brought in a bob or two over the years. Somebody. You mustn't think I'm crazy. My mind was wandering, tends to wander.
Uh, worm. <laughs> Limited amnesia is not a bad thing. Leaves spaces in the mind for humble concentration and dreams. What is a vision? What do they mean by the word? Worm. Where is your owner? Where my father? Where the deadly garden cripper? For I must confess to nefarious deeds on the Costa del Sol. If I can remember. You know, travel agencies and things. <laughs> Property deals. Non-existent plumbing. No sea view. Chartered flights not up to the standard of, of anyone. So they tell me. Fifty. Not an age for a man with so parsimonious an enthusiasm for life to begin again. But say, worm. You and your mates will have fun with me one day. just ahead of him and over this one and it's Tuscan Prince from Orient War and Argent has gone there Argent a follower at that one Argent has gone he was brought down in fact brought down it looked to me uh, Mill Melody went there too and also uh, King Tudor three out at that one and coming up towards the next it's Tuscan Prince in the lead from Orient War then comes Bay Tudor and Cantulum, and then Statful, Monty, and Princess Camilla, and Charlie H, and San Miguel, and Dad's Lad, and Halle Percy, and Lucky Edgar, and Tifu, and those are the only ones standing as they come to this next open It's me, Dad. Oh, no. In the lead from Cantulum, second. Third is Orient War, four, Statful, Monty. Nowhere else to go. Five is Bay Tudor, oh, no. six is Princess Camilla, and seven is Dad's Lad, eight is Charlie H on the inside, then Lucky You're welcome, Edgar, I hope. Miguel, welcome, I hope. And Tifu. All the riders up on their feet all right, and running down towards the next is Bill Tuscan Prince, who's made so much of the running in the lead from Cantillum and then Orient War. In fourth place is Statful Monty, five is Bay Tudor, and six San Miguel, and seven Dad's Lab, and eight Charlie Eight. Nine is Halle Percy, and ten Tifu, eleven Princess Camilla, twelve and last is Lucky Edgar as they come to the next one. It's Tuscan Prince in the lead from uh, Tuscan Prince. Tuscan Dad, I propose to blow up a biological right, warfare Prince station and then commit suicide. Go oh, Dad, I've come home to murder my sister. Possibly you as well. And get a life sentence. You know, lad, you're an horse I put two bob each way on. I think it's gotten a leg missing. It's a good job I'm not Hamlet. You'll never bloody well die. Look at it. Yon one, miles behind all to others. Any minute now, it'll topple over. Dad, I'm suffering from loss of memory. Technically known as amnesia. And delusions of persecution. <coughs> <coughs> oh, if someone had persecute yon fellas, tip me that horse. See you, down it goes. I'll need a bloody tractor to get it off course. Why don't you switch over to wrestling? Oh, sure, I'll be good. In a minute. No daddy ghost. No Hamlet. The world would have been deprived of a masterpiece. In my case, no such luck, since I can't put two sentences together. You planning on stopping long, Ellis? Only until the murder or murders. I wish you wouldn't talk, Daft. I can't see TV for you, neither. Where else to go? Bankrupt. Penniless, unemployable. It's more this house may be in your name, but I paid for it, my sole vicarious asset. I won't say resting place since you're here.
There's been talk about you. It's all over that village. Somebody saw someone in a newspaper. I know, Dad. I heard about it in the court. But you see, I had forgotten. To me, it is just hearsay. I, I learned it all by heart, but I failed to regain my actual memory. Do you see? Cheating, folks. Yes. Fiddling with money, not your own. That, too. What's more, I employed a shady architect to build a block of flats in Portugal. It fell down, a dog was killed, two passing mules were covered in dust, and may now be suffering from chronic bronchitis. A water a main splintered, and happy children played in the resulting fountain. A cruise ship sank, so I'm told by your sister. Yes, but not before each human life was saved. I cannot speak for the fate of the rats. <laughs> they call this wrestling. It's all a fake, you know. I admit, Father, I have engaged in the filthy work of capitalism. And to compound the crime, I've worked at the visibly dishonorable end of the system. What a way to spend and lose one's wartime gratuity. From a grateful country. Oh, dear. I will say... The air down here... After at North. You've got to breathe it. It's that clean. Do you have to, Dad? Do you really? Like wine. Spitfires, hurricanes, mosquitoes. Once a stolen Messerschmitt, just for the joke. That's when I got shot down flying the Messerschmitt. By a Spitfire. I parachuted into a ditch full of British infantry that gave me a cup of tea and a cigarette. Just to bang my head on something, I was never the same after. Do head injuries lead to subsequent crimes of fraud, etc., etc.? Piling thousands of happy English off on their doom-laden holidays. I was betrayed, Father, Dad, by my partner, whose name I cannot remember, but who appeared in Cortes Gomez or something or other. <laughs> Foreigners. Or oh, crossing the channel, Dad, you find the world is full of them. God made it so. And his work must not be maligned or spited. If you believe in him. England for the English. Oh, I don't know. I think Bradford has been much improved by the Pakistanis. You might say they add colour to the place. <laughs> for people like you to disapprove of. A maverick son is not enough. You need foreigners, Dad. You'd have a coronary through insufficient outlet for your prejudice. I don't know why they don't put bankrupts in prison. You know, to protect honest folk. I'm in prison, Dad. This thing here, skull. Can't get out. Food and liquid, yes, by all means. Down the esophagus, and so to be metabolized into other bits of me. Waste products eliminated, all systems go. Not the interior of the skull. Which is prison, goddamn you! Whoever devised a better one, after all. <laughs> you can always do your sell in, can't you? Ha <laughs> ha! That matter has been in my pending tray for years. Oh, God, look at your feet. What's up with my feet? They're on the end of your legs.
This is the pentangle I spoke of in your last dream. Pay attention. A five-pointed star that can be drawn without taking pencil from paper. This sign represents the domination of mind over the elements. Demons of the air, spirits of fire, phantoms of water and ghosts of the earth are all enchanted by this sign, that is, spellbound by it. By its means, spirits can be forced to appear. It represents order or confusion according to the direction of its points. The divine lamb or the accursed goat, star of the morning or evening, Victory or death, day or night. A pentagram with the human figure head downwards represents a demon that is intellectual subversion, disorder, or madness. I wish you'd keep your bloody dogs off me. My dogs. That slobbering pack. I even had them in the taxi from the station. I have no dogs. I reject all that rubbish. Just so. No need to be so bloody enigmatic. But there are enigmas. <laughs> no news to me. Your mind has rejected everything else, Ellis. Right. Then I'll just have to settle for peevish bewilderment. Okay? Very well. When conscious of failing will, the Magus turns his eyes towards this symbol, takes it in his right hand, feels armed with intellectual omnipotence, provided that he is truly a king, worthy to be led by the star to the divine cradle of realization, provided that he knows, dares, wills, and keeps silent, provided that he is familiar with its usages, provided that the intrepid gaze of his soul corresponds with those two eyes which the ascending point of our pentagram ever presents open. A man called Eliphas Levi wrote that in 1896, Ellis. You have read Levi.
look nervous and defensive, Ellis. Possibly. These days I sometimes forget not to look like what I feel. I think he wants a row. Why would I want a row? It's one of those banal paradoxes. If we showed disapproval, you might feel less guilty. Guilty of what? You mean the bankruptcy bit? Oh, nothing so vulgar. He'll be making me want a bloody row in a minute. Come on, you two. I meant, darling, your brother's sense of failure. Everything gone. Law court, nursing home, middle-aged depressive. He's kept his numerous faculties, one must admit, but clearly has nothing to apply them to. Nothing to live for. That's good, that's very good. You keep at it, James. You'll begin to drool with self-satisfaction if you persist. What is worse than a cultured lawyer with one of those aloof, dissecting minds? You've become seedy, Ellis. Wasn't I always? I love my brother. Do you love James? Of course. Ah, now, don't mistake me, Ellis. I'm very fond of you. But what on earth are we to do about the mess you're in? What are we to do? <laughs> don't you want us to help you, darling? Don't Isn't you that see, why Ellis? you came down here? I mean, well, of course, you are literally a bankrupt. But the business has its symbolic side, wouldn't you say? It's a funny phrase, really. Bankruptcy business has me in fits. <laughs> As for symbolic, would digs like that just bounce off me? They're just your pathetic way of trying to entertain yourself. What about father? Do you really intend to live down there at his place? Dad, I remember at the time I thought it somewhat aggressive of you to buy him a house in our village. All right, then, Dad. <laughs> what a pity you two didn't inherit something instead of all that painful business to achieve. I regret to say the old man has planted cabbages where I would have preferred, say, hydrangeas. Oh, yes, he's a problem. He's made up of passes in him for his mind about me. I do my best. I spill tea on him. I trample on his feet when I go past. I burn his toast. I did cunning things with the controls of his TV, which seems to have foxed him. This morning, I throw a bucket of boiling water over his rhubarb patch. Yes. Nothing seems to get any sort of reaction out of him. I'm a blight that the Lord has visited on him, and that is that. <laughs> he's not just an old working man, he's a chunk of bloody West Riding landscape. Transported down here to exist as a living reproach to all that is southern. And cabbages apart, and rhubarb, his garden looks like something cultured a screaming point by a retired bank executive in the Reading area. Mind you, you'll have noticed he's got a wee slag heap at the bottom. Well, I mean, it's only about three foot high, but it looks like the real thing, all right. Or to get yourself a woman, Ellis. I lost two when things went asunder for me off the coasts of Spain, Portugal and Greece. So I'm told. People will try to bring things back to anyone uncooperative enough as to have amnesia. A mature woman. A competent creature, a woman who respects your secrets but won't be a slave to your behaviour. She would need, of course, some kind of private means. Can a man who's lost his memory be said to have secrets? And what behaviour are you talking about? The private means have no objection then. <laughs> we have one for you, haven't we, Anne? Possibility. A certainty. Mm, you haven't given me much to go on yet, but she sounds like an obscenity. Brother-in-law, you've decided to re-enter our lives, our world. You've been idiotic in business and perverse about the cure of your mental aberrations. Your lonely father no doubt grieves for you one quarter of a mile from this very room. Your sister disturbs my dreams with her anxieties about you. What about a spot of discipline? Hmm? A sense of values? A few social coordinates? So that you might live peaceably, or at least without too much friction, among us. Reeves for me, does he? Dad? What's her name? Angela. 
Well, that sounds ominous. What does she do? A cabinet minister. What sort of government do we have at the moment? Oh, does it matter? Have you any political positions? And if so, are they consistent with what you've learned about these last 15 fraudulent years of yours? Uh, Ellis, doesn't it matter more what she's, what she's like as a person? Come round for cocktail Sunday, about half past 12. Hmm. Get to know each other, old boy. Hmm. I'm quite taken aback, you know. Angela will take you forward, Ellis. <laughs> I'm a sort of derelict. That's the whole point, darling. Angela Ellis. needs a derelict. Well, she has time for one, outside of her obligations at the ministry. Oh, it's a small, rather pointless ministry, really. No need for worry on that account. I'm an intractable derelict. Yeah. And so much more the challenge to Angela. On the train from Paddington, I had the fantasy. I was coming home to murder my dad. Becoming an obsession. Your father inspires similar feelings in all of us, Ellis. We are ashamed of them. We obviously wouldn't dream of acting on them. He is a harmless, if unconsciously brutal, old man. He is innocent, I'd say, no awareness. He possesses only the minimal requirements to move, breathe, feed. We are quite used to him by now, and so will you be. You wouldn't dream of. But you see, I do. What, what I mean is I tend to dream that either he or I wishes to see the other one violently propelled into the void. Oh, it could be anything, savage dogs, a revolver. There's a weak killer in somebody's old team one night. No need to mock James and me, Alice. I read some very strange books when I was in the nursing home about the occult, etc. Are, are, are you familiar with pentangles and pentagrams? Spirits, demons and phantoms? Well, no wonder you've been having bad dreams. I thought that sort of thing was more in the line of dropped-out youth these days. He frightens me. Well, he wants to. I certainly do not. Things just pop out of my mouth these days. Where do they come from? What goes on inside? Books on the occult. Oh, I was just passing the time. Yes, time. I'm afraid we have people coming to dinner, Ellis. Ellis, do take care. I'm not unhinged, you know. You have had a bad time, haven't you? Mm, he certainly has. I even talked to a worm the day that I arrived. Oh, good God, Ellis. <laughs> 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 I mean, I talk to all kinds of inanimate objects. I believe the worm was animate. <laughs> oh, but you know what I mean. I think I'll try and find it again tomorrow. <laughs> Cheerio! The circle surrounding the star should be nine feet in diameter. Candles around the outside of the circle should be encircled by wreaths of vervain. Once inside the circle, the person conjuring up the spirits is safe. I know how to do it. What's thou up to? Looking for a worm. 
Going fishing, are you? It's a special worm. Won't we your name on it, then? Like they say about bullets. It's a worm with which I... I mean, I should say it is a worm to which I talk. Hey, Alice. What's to be done? About me? Who else? I'm harmless, you know. Talking on murder? I figure a speech, merely. In a sense, an untruth, Dad. That bottle of brandy I keep for when I have my bronchitis. Yeah? It's gone down. And down where? Down an inch. Now, that inch went down me. After I went to see our Anne and James last evening. You were in bed. I still don't hold with drinking. Look, worm could be mine. What's that got against me, Alice? Nothing personal, Dad. I'm the victim of a condition, that's all. What condition? Well, it's very widespread. That's a lack of communication with parent or parents. Incurable. Try worms instead. I never could make the out. Well, the condition does affect both sides. Oh. Now, don't get worked up. It's, it's quite normal. There, well, that's a nice word that you'll like. Normal. That talks gibberish, lad. What does your daughter talk? Your son-in-law? They talk as I can understand. Do you like them? Any man loves his own. But they don't speak to worms. They waste no time on a humble fauna. Yes, I've learned to speak your language, Dad. That's where I'm deficient. I have to give me time. Meanwhile, I shall hold discourse with worms. Unless, of course, thrust into some situation which compels an appearance of sociableness. And then it's to be cunning, Dad. That always was. We should leave me to it. Nay. I'll leave thee to out that thou likes. Temperate curly worm. Put back your ears. Alice Cripper speaks. A man of yearning, though not much learning. Whose soul creaks. Using the term so very loosely, of course. Whose days are vacant and whose mental nightlife appears to be carrying the burden. Of what? Don't ask me. Fifty years wreckage from pram to middle-aged humiliation. No politics, no religion, no philosophy. No love. No family of my own. No desire now. Nor money either. Self-pity might help, though disgusting to others. But I seem to have missed out on that as well. Cripper is the last one to pity Cripper. Nor is he able to dish out the blame on anyone else, refusing to hold anyone responsible for anything. Preferring to accept the consequences for their random passage through life. But! Where my anger? Where my yell of rage? Am I wounded or not? Who cares if the unconscious is busy? And the achingly conscious man lacks will and purpose, direction and allegiance. There you go, um, sliding back into the earth. You're bored?
What if I should marry a cabinet minister then? See all kinds of doctors first, take eh, Tripper. Get yourself an x ray, a cardiogram, and cephalogram. Have the pancreas and liver probed. Thyroid, stomach, guts, and gonads. Assert yourself at least as a functioning specimen. Anyway, blind the woman with something or other. Health or disease. I think I'll settle for creeping debilitation. Typical. Why? Because it hints at some form of quiet, undramatic departure. At the same time implies that I'm heading there faster than luckier men. Touch this Angela's heart. But not without medical documentation. Remember that. Because hypochondriacs make poor clowns. <laughs> Nothing at all, then? Nothing. Of course, these medical technicians can make mistakes. Naturally. A bit overweight, though, no? A bit. I assure you, I've treated this body badly, Doctor. It's come through your abuses remarkably well, then, is all I can say. Exactly what have you done to it? Oh, the usual, I suppose. Oh, I, I don't want to make a fuss to, to appear exceptional in that respect, you know. What? Smoking, drinking, no exercise, lack of sleep, decades of it. Yes, and a great deal of psychosomatic spade work by my unconscious. Look, I'm just an average overworked GP. Your sister and your brother-in-law registered with me. Now you. It makes a GP's stomach sink when the patient uses the word psychosomatic. I expect you realise that. An intelligent man. Was teasing. Thanks be to God. I hope, Doctor, I hope you know your Freud. Uh, Stekel, Klein, Adler, and so forth. Uh, up to, shall we say, those of our contemporary chaps who are subverting the lot, and especially behaviorism. Mr. Cripper, we've worked over you from scalp to toenails, practically. In the meanwhile, thousands less fortunate than yourself have died from everything from accidents to plain ordinary despair. Imagine the spectrum, the range of awful possibilities for the human body to sicken and perhaps die. Should we be chatting? I'll concede you the amnesia and the doubtless troubling period in the nursing home, but all that's outside my province. I fear you are healthy. Is that really bad news? In a way, yes. You wish to be ill. Well, something to focus on, you know. Why not focus on 20 to 30 more years of fruitful existence? There you are, you've hit on it. That's my problem. I can't. The report from your psychiatrist in the nursing home is resonant with despair, Mr. Cripper. Not apropos the amnesia, I hasten to say. That one was obvious. Crime, discovery, indictment, withdrawal from recollection of the matters involved. These fit together with a tedious frequency, Mr. Cripper. No, I fancy you had the man, uh, your psychiatrist, fretting to get to grips with more serious cases. I fancy you bored him, Mr. Does one have to be yelling and screaming, rushing about with an axe, menacing young children, or what? Obviously not. I do get dressed now, please. My brain. Organically sound. My nerves. Self-inflicted. My hostility to dad. Healthy. Of 
My unhappiness. Understandable. My apathy. Reassuring. Reassuring? What a fix we'd all be in if you were indulging yourself more energetically than you are. Oh, you wag, you joker, you awful silly! I prescribe a mild tranquilizer. Damn it, I am tranquil to the point of vegetating! Very well then, something to pick you up. Oh, I didn't mean to be rude. Look, I'm sure your situation is upsetting. Oh, what is my situation, Doctor? Do you think I have one? Hasn't everybody? I was just trying to shake another concession out of you, that's all. Well, I've met defeat. Will you give way now? To a young woman with a query malignant tumour of the breast, for example? Oh, don't batter me. Don't shame me. Leave that to my relatives, will you? I certainly will. Tacitus. Message? Everything unknown is taken as marvellous, but now the limits of Britain are laid bare. You look like me. It is characteristic of the human mind to hate the man that one has injured. Well, that's a point well taken. Name? Alexander the Great. Message? I am dying with the help of too many physicians. God, it multiplies and multiplies. Name. Aristotle. Message. A plausible impossibility is always preferable to an unconvincing possibility. Dear Dad. I like these pentangles. I'm wrecking history like an ash tip. See self everywhere, but mostly in dead men. No real clues yet. <laughs> I'm not a cabinet minister, Alice. <laughs> I don't think I wouldn't have found it absorbing. Really, James, what a ridiculous thing to have told me. No. Well, he, he likes being told ridiculous things. <laughs> and I know that that is what they are. Well, I must say I kept quiet, but I didn't think it was very funny. <laughs> I didn't think it was funny at all. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yes. No cause for sorrow. <laughs> really, James. <laughs> what are you then? A biologist. <laughs> Your bloody husband really has got a tortuous mind where I'm concerned, you know. And I should never have come back to Lower Burley, but three days on Paddington Station seemed quite enough. No. <laughs> Talks in his sleep, at least do. Paper thin, them walls. I can hear him jabbering half the night. <laughs> Talk about a peaceful retirement without any surround place. More like a bloody asylum. Of course, I'm first to make allowances. With Anne and me hot in pursuit. In pursuit on what? Allowances, yours. We make allowances for Ellis too. What else? His brain may be infirm, but uh, his idiosyncrasies continue to entertain. <clears throat> My brain, as you call it, is alert to all forms of human sorrow, sadness, hollowness, loss, grief. Behind the eyes, it contemplates itself with wry astonishment. What about yours? They will bicker. Ellis once referred to me a long time ago as being upper class, and obviously he's never got over it. His mother worked her fingers to the bone for gentry. Mm. And mercifully, she didn't live to hear of a son flying a Messerschmitt. I feel quite out of the conversation. Tell us about biology. 
I was talking to Darwin in a dream last night in my pentangle. He said we will now discuss in a little more detail the struggle for existence. I'm in molecular biology. And what did you say to Darwin, Ellis Love? I said my struggle for existence is over. See, I always remember to write it all down the following morning. <laughs> did your remark induce gloom in Darwin? Not at all. He simply said that the highest possible stage of moral culture is when we recognise that we ought to control our thoughts. And our dreams. Yes, I did chip in with that merry little repasta. But then he faded out and Freud faded in. <laughs> the man dreams like a farting film. I'll not have such language. It slipped out. I do apologise. He used that word once. And probably his mother and all. I don't think she minded. I nearly killed thee. What a noble way to die. That would have been at the age of 40 odd. Not to mention the reason. I must leave. No hard feelings, but I find I can't sit at table with any of you. I shall wend my way. Wend? I wonder if it's going to rain now. Let me drive you. Oh, I do need some shoes. God knows there's a certain amount of gravel between here and there. What's so damn wrong with us? Nothing. Well, then. Uh, let the miserable son go. Uh, that's what I say. Joking folks, hospitality in their faces. No, Dad, I take back what I said. You and I do communicate, after all, hideously well in word, thought, etc. Mm. Angel, if you would drive me, I should be a bog of gratitude. Do you know what you're doing, Angel? I like him. She likes him. <laughs> Watch out, young woman. Why? You might find this end digging for worms. <laughs> it refers to a strange habit that I've acquired. You suddenly found yourself a sense of humour, Dad. Yeah, I've not been shot on seeing funny side. He wants to learn to see it funny side. Alice does. Then up and he'd pull his end together. I'm held together by my skeleton, Dad. It's doing a good job. Let us go, then, you and I. When worms are flying in the sky, like spaghetti etherized upon the table. Or should it be Gable? Down by the old church, where yesterday a small skull rolled gently out from among the graves and came to rest at my feet. Child of seven or so, I should say. I must remind the vicar to keep a sharp eye on the movements of his tenants. Ellis. <coughs> you see what I mean? He's turning my wife into a nervous wreck. <laughs> what have you been turning her into all these years, James? What am I? No more than a colourful expression of my interior poverty. You are a straw, a reed, but doubt you will sing gently in the wind. Suppose for years you've been digging my sister's psychic grave. Quote! If thou didst ever hold me in thy heart, ever sent thee from felicity for a while, and in this harsh world draw thy breath in pain to tell my story. Alas, poor Anshin, you are Shakespeare well. Fuck her off, brother! No, no. Oh, did you hear? My father is a horse and neighs. to have jolted James somewhat out of his customary sneering superiority. And your sister? And your father? Being loved by me is a nasty, unwholesome experience. Can you get up? Oh. Oh. Bells between the ears. My brain... Damn it, it's suddenly a clapper in my skull. James has the punch of a professional when he's man enough to get down to it. Angela, does compassion still niggle somewhere? For you? I, for me. You were cruel to Anne. Yes. 
but at the same time I respected her distress. Lack of orientation, you know. What's the point of disguising from the poor sods that their problem with me is a big one? Bleeding colossus of a problem. Either that or they should exile me altogether. Face the facts, father, sister, awful brother-in-law. Or for you. Do I attract you somehow? I don't know. You seem simply then, shall we say, ready to be kind. You don't love your family at all, I should say. Past it. Sitting on your rubbish dump. I strike out at them now and again. <laughs> More or less. Uh-huh. An ordinary man trying to strike an extraordinary posture. Take me away, Angela. For good? I wouldn't be so presumptuous. You can't come inside this thing, you know. I know. Name? Oscar Wilde. Message? Women represent the triumph of matter over mind, just as men represent the triumph of mind over morals. You disapprove of Angela? There was no fornication, for example, not at her place or, or indeed anywhere. I don't lie. And I once said somewhere or other, it is a terrible thing for a man to find out suddenly that all his life he has been speaking nothing but the truth. Well, that doesn't apply to me, for God's sake. Who knows? I think you'd better go. Go on, be gone, I banish you. <whistles> Dad! Garen Cripper! One thing. Yes? Why do you dress and talk posh on these occasions? Why the dark glasses? There may be a submerged aristocrat in many of us. There's a conspiracy going on here. If so, it's one of your own invention. Like your distinguished visitors. I didn't invoke you. No, I invoked you. What riddles? What conundrums? How far is it to the sea, Angela? About 12 miles from here. Take me to the sea. Any special reason? I think it'd be nice to wade out and just sink. Maybe with a nice book, you know. Eat a rabbit. A fat biography of Tolstoy. Wuthering Heights. You know, till the seabed just shelved away. And I sit and watch. You could drive away. I could love you instead. People have tried that. As your worm. Your dreams. Thriving both. I won't take you to the sea. Where then? Something will bring your memory back one day. I told you the past has been fully researched and recounted. What about the future? That's what the bloody doctor said. Reasonable enough, though. I'm not so to speak like a person. I'm like something that's been tape recorded. And I think the great cosmic recorder of tapes has run out of cassettes. relied on your family for anything. 
Didn't it? Didn't it? Did it? Hoped? No. Wanted? No! I think you've been very aggressive. Your sister's in a state of nervous collapse. James half ready to kill you. And your father no recourse but to assume you're out of your mind. Not bad going, eh? <laughs> Not bad going at all. So? Leaving only the awkward question... Of? Of why. Why do you think? I want you to make love to me. Oh. Oh, fart. Why did they say you were in that line? Well, a girl who said she was once my secretary in Valencia, she said that I had her across my desk. There I was one minute, costing a new package holiday deal, the next minute, plans. <laughs> With her collaboration? Well, she said she was taken by surprise at first. Notebook in one hand, pencil in the other. And she concluded my way was a better way of spending the time. And you? I apparently was utterly taken back by my behavior. So there we were, she said, with her feet drumming my kidneys. <laughs> and me looking as if I wondered what on earth my body thought it was doing. The body itself, Mark, you can be said to think. Did she say she liked it? Comment was, I believe. I've known worse except for the expression on your face. <laughs> she thought my expression filled to the occasion just as. Any other examples? I mean, with other women? A few. Nearly always the same story. One or two lived with me for a bit. And then they left because of my expression during what one of them called intercourse. It disturbed them. It interfered with their orgasms. It sometimes induced tears and vehement accusations. Things are worse now. I get thunderstruck with amazement that my body can do anything at all. You know, even getting a mouthful of tea in seems a curious thing for it to be doing. I see it. What do you call it, then? Ellis Cripper. Crash, that is the way out. Language impossible without naming things. Ellis? Many things have become a sort of philosophical puzzle to me. I see. Now, hold on. I'm going to drive fast. I didn't know you lived in a stately home. Well, it isn't now. It's a research station. I like that big empty hall. Sunday tomorrow. Can I borrow that hall tomorrow evening? Borrow? I mean, use for an hour or two. A little surprise for you all. Dad, James, Anne, you. Nothing sinister. An entertainment. It's my birthday. But no fuss. No catering. A few small props. I don't see why not. Will they come? I rely on you for that. On my ingenuity. Yes. How about my ingenuity this past hour? Memorable. 
You must start having memorable experiences, Ellis. Fill up the vacuum. That's right. Yes, one shouldn't die without a few concrete memories knocking about. I, um... See what they must have meant about your expression when making love. How was it, from your point of view? Exactly as you described it from yours. Being? Disbelief that you were engaged in being at what you were at. That it was. All right. That it was at what it was at. <laughs> Your mug. <laughs> Dear Ellis, was contorted with disbelief. But you got on with it just the same. And I hope you liked it. Ecstatic. I nearly passed out. From pleasure. It seems to function quite rapidly well, despite any mental problems you might have about it. Jesus, oh, what a split, what a crack, what a division of labor. <laughs> I'd say it's not uncommon. The old mind-body problem was banging around, never to be resolved. You know, you're very clever. Most perceptive. Something of a genius, eh? Silly. But I did get a first in philosophy before going into science. I packed in philosophy for science, Ellis. And I hope you find me formidable enough for the fact to tranquilize you, calm you, relaxing. Because you see, you can't outwit me. I suspected that, you know. Convalescence. Ellis. Convalescence. With Angela. Definitely. Good. Can I move in then? With you? I'd expect you to. What's more? You should see the grounds this place has. Fields. A lake. Woods. Must be swarming with worms. Well, you could bring your own in a little box on a thin layer of soil. Oh, Angela, sarcasm from the word girl. Shall we say piss taking as a form of prudence, caution, maybe self defense? Can't work, you know. I wouldn't have thought so. Money? I've got plenty. So, you've got me into your laboratory. Hmm? Yes. In a manner of speaking. Dear Alice, happy 
happy birthday to me. <sighs> Not a bad place. Ticking counters, computers, incubators and so forth. Hmm. Excellent fate. Like a rat in one of those mazes. Come one, come all. Angela, study the mournful cripper. But why? Out of sadism, curiosity, disbelief or what? Will there be punishment and reward therapy as designed by Ange? A pentagram with the human figure head downwards represents a demon, that is, intellectual subversion, disorder, or madness. Welcome. Any presents? A bauble or two for my half century? Mean bastards. I've often suffered for my thin streak of optimism. For God's sake, we have heard of life imitating art, but must it imitate dreams? Well, whichever is going on, none of you is coming in my jolly old pentangle. That's in the rules, isn't it? I mean, well, have I sought individuality and mere quaintness? Am I a trifle confused, mixed up? Shall I wake sweating and thankful for the morning light? Alone but safe. You lost your tongues, have you? Well, that would be unnatural. Look, I'm getting frightened. Sphincter's loosening. Dad. <coughs> James. And Angela. <coughs> <coughs> 